Yatesbury lies to the north of the Terrell Downs with its white horse and has been a village of importance since Neolithic times. All Saints Church dates back to the 12th century. In the 15th century, the tower was built and the first reference to any bells is in 1553 when three are recorded. Most of us have heard church bells ringing, whether it's in the countryside or in the town. But very few of us know what's happening at the time the sound is being produced. In a tower like ours, where we are down at ground level, you can see us ringing, you can hear the noise, but you've got no way of connecting what's happening between here and there. And the aim of this film is to show you the link between the two. The next step is to move up the very narrow staircase, assuming that we don't get stuck halfway up, to see what's happening in the bell chamber. Here we are at last, on the last two steps, and a big decision made. I'm getting far too old to keep climbing up and down these stairs. One short step and a few more steps to the hatch, which will take us through to the bells which you're about to see working. This shot shows how the rope is attached to the wheels and the position of the five bells in the tower. This bell was cast in 1636 and shows the slide bar and stop which holds the stay in the resting position. As you can see, the bell is now in the mouth down position, which is the safe position. But to make doubly sure, I'm going to assume the worst. I've tried it and it is definitely down. So now we will get it into the raised position for ringing, where we've got far more control over the bell than it is when it's being chimed like this. It's being swung, and you can't control how often the sound comes out. But as we go up, it's now striking on both sides of the bell. And the bell should now be about halfway up. See, as it goes further up, more rope is vanishing. Oh dear. We're now on the point of balance. And the bell is now falling away from balance. And again, on the point of balance, where I can let it go back and rest on the stay, or I can pull it down again. And all the time, I'm using the rope to keep me in touch with what's happening to the bell. I'm just rocking it now, and I've got the option of either pulling it off again, or setting it. So now you can see why, if the bell is in this position, and you walk into the tower and pull that rope, you could well be up there. And now we can control the speed at which we ring that bell completely by either holding it on balance or bringing it down a bit. And when all five of the bells are ringing, you don't clash into each other and you can also change positions in what's called change ringing. I think that's a stop. In 1940, at the start of the Second World War, the government banned all bell ringing from churches and chapels. This meant that if you ever heard the bells ringing, it meant the Germans had invaded us and we were in trouble. At the end of the ringing session, we then have to bring the bell down to the safe position from where we started, and this is how we do that. checking the bell so that it's beginning to drop its swing and down. I have to take a coil in at that point, which wasn't very pretty. to the 
chiming position. And that's where we started from. Bell safe, put away tidily, and ready for the next time. I was taught to ring in 1949, just after the end of the Second World War, when bell ringers who'd been fighting away in the forces were coming home and wanted to get teams of ringers back together again. I had just learned to do change ringing before when I went to university. Unfortunately, I didn't keep ringing going while I was there. And then again, when I left university and started working on a farm full time, we were miles away from any church and the work just meant that I hadn't got spare time to keep going. So my knowledge of change ringing never really progressed. Once I came here to Yatesbury, uh, it was about 20 years since I'd done any ringing. And so it was a case of a steep learning curve to try and catch up with some of the change ringing and also to teach the youngsters how to do change ringing as well. Most of those did the same as me, and when they left school, went to college, got jobs, they gave up ringing. But it's a bit like riding a bicycle. Once you've learned to do it, the basic ringing is still with you forever. It's the change ringing that takes some catching up with. <laughs>